Subash, you were born in Zanzibar and then moved to Kenya, uh, which became home to you. Uh, tell us about your early life. Yes, uh, I was born in Zanzibar in, on uh, 30th March 1946. Mm -hmm. Beautiful island of Zanzibar. Lovely. Yes, lovely. Uh, I was educated. I had my primary education at ESM Madrasa School. And that school was near Munazi Moza Sports Ground, where senior cricketers used to play. Like there were uh, Ismailis, uh, Bora team, Hindus team, they used to play competitive cricket every Sunday. Okay. And uh, sometimes I used to go and offer my services as a scorer. And the teams used to guide me how to do scoring. And, you know, that inspired me some short. Uh, to have interest, generated interest in the noble game of cricket from my young days of uh, Zanzibar. Yeah. <laughs> now, the first World Cup was held in 1975. Correct. And, uh, of course, we went at that point in time as East Africa. Um, how competitive was it? It was very uh, competitive. Competing with, between Kenya and Uganda Well, to get a place. I'll tell you one thing. Uganda had a good side. Hmm. Kenya also had a good side and Tanzania also had a good side because we used to play East Africa. Of course, with Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Yes. yes. And then we included uh, Zambia. And oh, Zambia even then, came Then the Zambia came Africa. later on. Then we became East and Central Africa. Oh, okay. And um, it was a pretty good team. Yeah, East pretty Africa good team. team. And then I'll tell you one thing. Uh, we must give credit to let uh, Hardial Singh, Jenti Bhai Patel, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Mr. Jasmer Singh, the for KC officials. Right. They work hard. They realize that uh, it is no, no, no good for our players to g get associated with uh, Tanzania and Uganda when most of our players deserve to be in the Kenya, uh, in that team, East African team. So we separated from East African, uh, what you call, uh, sort of uh, territory association. Tell us also a little more about umpiring at ICC World Cup qualifiers and the scrutiny uh, that comes with officiating at such a tournament. Yeah, scrutiny is a very good uh, subject you brought. Mm -hmm. Now, first I'll talk, talk about the scrutiny. I was doing one of the international games at Nairobi Gymkhana. Yeah. There was one uh, gentleman, I don't remember, but he came, I think, from Pakistan. He was the anti-corruption official of ICC. Right. He comes to me in the morning. He says, are you Mr. Modi? I said, I am. He said, are you empowering this game? I said, yes, I am. Is your son playing in this game? I said, he is. Mm -hmm. So he says, can you provide me with the, the entire match, what, you, what they call it, uh, recorded uh, video right. of the entire match? So I told him, actually, I'm not the production manager of this, uh, this TV, the video company, yeah. but I can take you over there, mm -hmm. and he will be pleased to give you a copy of the... So he at least put something in my mind yeah. that I am being monitored. My progress is going to be monitored because they, they, they are so brilliant. You know, they are, they are also looking at the eye contact. Sometimes they come into the changing room where the empires are having lunch or something. They will just come in behind you and you would not know who these gentlemen are. Sometimes, you know. Sometimes they introduce themselves, sometimes they don't. And then, umpiring uh, at, uh, uh, at the ICC level, you know, actually, it's, it's a privilege. It's an honor, I would say. Not only honor for me and my family, it's an honor for the country, Kenya, you know. hundred percent. Yeah. I was about to say that. Yes. Uh, for you as a Kenyan and for us as a nation. Yes. It's, it's such an extreme honor. Right. That, uh, you know, our Kenyan is representing us at an international event. Um, now, let's talk about some of the high-profile events you have in, okay? You did the 1998 Commonwealth Games in Malaysia. Um, you were also the fourth umpire at the 1999 Cricket World Cup um, and the 2000 Champions Trophy was another major event you took part in. Yes. How memorable were these events? All, uh, tell all us a were, little bit more about... All were memorable. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, umpiring at uh, Commonwealth Games, you know, before the tournament started, you know, having a march in front of thousands of people from all over the world, you know. Yeah and all the uh, teams, you know. And then, uh, empiring, I was given the first game, uh, South Africa versus Northern Ireland in, in, in Kuala Lumpur. So, and John Reed, the former uh, New Zealand captain, was the match referee. 
So we had a good game. It was a high profile game. A high profile game. And then second game, uh, it was between South Africa and Bangladesh. And that game, I'll tell you one thing, Fayaz. Mm. Whenever Bangladesh uh, f uh, bowler used to appeal, 3,000 spectators of Bangladesh used to appeal. How was that? <laughs> yeah, on the ground. And, and, uh, I can that imagine the extreme pressure yes, yes. When, the f when the crowd is so big and large yes. and they're supporting a particular team. And that was not only a live game, and we had uh, well known, world well known commentators like Ravi Shastri. He was one of the commentators, yes. you know. But you know, when we are, when we are empiring, our, our concentration is on the, on, the, on the pitch, on the ground. We don't know who is looking there or who is there, you know, we are not worried. But thank God, with the blessings of God, we, we, we had a good uh, tournament, you know. Now this is very interesting. You called an LBW leg like before wicket uh, on Hitesh. When he was playing against Bangladesh uh, for Kenya in 2006, what was the reaction in the stands and what was it like, um, most importantly, at the dinner table at home in the evening? I tell you, <laughs> but, but my, wife, my wife supported me. My wife told my son, mm. he was a little... What was Hitesh's reaction? Yeah, Hitesh's reaction was that, uh, you know, initially when I did the first uh, ODI match, West Indies versus Kenya at Sikinian, Yeah. He, he was not disturbed because I didn't have to give him out. He got out uh, yes. caught yeah, by... But this decision was by his father? Yes, by, you... yes, by me. <laughs> so, in the evening, he felt, he told my wife that I think daddy now should not empire when I am playing because it uh, makes me nervous, you know. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, when he is playing, I take him as a different... I don't take him as my son. I take him as an, a player. Yeah. You see, otherwise, if I have to look like that, you know, and and my my empiring, not only is watched on t televised by uh, millions of people around the world. There is a captain who is writing report on empires. There is a match referee who is writing report. And we we had Roshan Mahanama from Sri Lanka, and I was empiring with Hari Aran from India. You know, and. You're also a Kenyan selector. Tell us a little bit about that role. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, appointed by Kenya Cricket Association as one of the selectors. At that time, Sunil Sarkar, one of the finest cricket umpires, yeah. was our uh, convener. Mm -hmm. And then we had let Mehmood Qureshi in the... He yes. was, he, Mehmood Qureshi was like our secretary. He used to write minutes and everything. Very good cricketer as well. Very good, uh, brilliant cricketer, yeah. team manager of uh, Kenya. You know, when Kenya is the semi-finals yes. under the captainship of uh, Maurice Odumbe and uh, my son also was the vice captain in the World Cup mm. and you know you uh, interviewed Asif Karim he had yes. a brilliant spell against Australia oh. for his brilliant bowling performance what a memorable world spell class bowling performance by world Asif world class bowling performance yes so uh, uh, Sunil Sarkar was a disciplined good man and that time we used to have proper uh, minutes of, uh, and we used to have uh, selection meeting. Sometimes we used to have uh, at Jimkhana, sometimes at uh, Gone Institute, sometimes at Sarali. We used to go everywhere, and we used to keep too much confidentiality about the selection. And then the selection used to go to Kenya Cricket Association. And then they used to bless us whether the selection is in order. So it was being handled very professional. Very professionally. Yeah. And then... With a strict code of conduct. Yes. And, and then, confidentiality. Yes. And 1994 was the first time when Kenya entered into uh, international uh, arena of cricket because we reached the finals at Ruraraka Sports Club. We, lo we lost very closely to UAE in the finals. And the team was brilliantly captained by Tom Ticolo. Yes, another legend. Yes, another legend. Now, your experience of having met heads of states, um, Honorable President, the late Daniel Arab Moy, uh, at State House uh, before going to the Commonwealth uh, Games in Malaysia in 1988. And, of course, the King of Malaysia uh, during the Commonwealth Games in Malaysia and the Queen of England at uh, the Buckingham Palace in 1999 during the Cricket uh, World Cup. Uh, so you've been extremely honoured. <laughs> yes, we were, not only me, but all, all the uh, Kenyans. To have met all these heads of state. The sporting continent were, were really honored. Mm. Very honored and humble. And I'll tell you one thing. You know, when we see these uh, uh, top heads of uh, 
states. Yeah. You know, we have different feelings about what when you meet them, you know, they are like us and they are so friendly. It's a very humbling. Very humbling. Isn't it? And, and, and I'll tell you one thing. We were told, you know, we were given a letter before going to meet the queen that we have to address her like Ma or uh, the Prince Philips as the, his uh, royal highness. Mm -hmm. So when, when my turn came, I shook hand and she was uh, wearing the, the white, uh, what do you call the? The glove. Glove. And I said, I was said, Subhash Modi from Kenya. I said, I just want to take a few seconds of yours. She nodded, yeah. You know, I come from Kenya, mm -hmm. where you became the queen. Right. At the treetop. She went up as a princess and yes. came down as a queen. That's right. At the treetop. And she said, ah, yes. <laughs> but pity, we, we were not allowed to take photos that time. Sad. Now, of course, your experience of... Uh, and, 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 and sorry about... We, we were also proud to meet the uh, late Honorable uh, pr uh, President Daniel Arab Moy at the State House. Yeah. He was very, yes. very jovial, of very course, friendly. That was before you went for yes. the Commonwealth Games in Malaysia. Yeah, yes. and, and in Malaysia, it thanks to Mr. Let Jasmer Singh. Jasmer Singh had written a book on cricket. And on the top cover, there was a king, uh, the photo of the king of Malaysia and Mr. Jasmer Singh together. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you read that book. No. So he was watching a cricket match. So I requested... Uh, and his son, actually, he was one of the ICC officials that time. We used to call him Prince, you know. So I used his influences. Can I go and see King of Malaysia, your father? He says, okay. He arranged some with the security. And he was watching the game. And I was, uh, I was escorted in front. And uh, it was my honor to present that book. And I said, this book is from Mr. Jasmer Singh, the, the manager of managers and former Kenya Cricket Association chairman. And he was very pleased to receive that book. Fine. That was an amazing experience, what you just talked about. Yes. Um, now we're going to wind up uh, this interview. Uh, finally, uh, you, of course, you worked as a, uh, with a Gilvy and Mather for 35 years and were also recalled uh, back as a consultant uh, to support cricket through Ogilvy and Mather? Uh, no, uh, I'll tell you, uh, let me just a little correct. Uh, yes, I worked uh, with uh, Ogilvy and Mather for 35 years, and then uh, they, they gave me a very good uh, farewell gift, besides my pension and sovereign spare. Mm. They gave me a cricket bat, signed by the CEO, Mr. Kome, Kome Mambia, and uh, by, by the team of Ogilvy and Mather East Africa and also Ogilvy, and Mather, uh, Ogilvy PR team. And after a few months, I was recalled back by Mr. Kome and then I again worked for five years. It's, it was actually an honor and my company Ogilvy and Mather East Africa, originally it was called SH Benson in 1970 when I joined. Right. But I'll tell you, they were very supportive of my cricket. But before we end the interview... I've got one last question for you. Um, it was an extreme honor to have uh, worked for Gilvy and Mather, beautiful farewell they gave you, yes. and of course them recalling you back uh, just showed how much they appreciated you. Yes. Um, finally, a message to those uh, who want to take the leadership of cricket Kenya in the forthcoming elections from a veteran like you. Yes, uh, that's a very good question. But Fayaz, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, we, uh, I had given my interview during Asif Karim's uh, Kenya International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned there that uh, Kenya did very well, historically up to 2003. Right. You now you were climbing, and all the teams from all over the world wanted to come and play Kenya. Yeah. Teams from South Africa, Pakistan, India, Zimbabwe, name, name the teams, and they were always keen to come and play Kenya. After 2003, our graph, cricketing graph standards dropping down. I don't, sad, I'm not blaming... I'm a not, very, very sad state yes. of affairs. I'm not... I'm seeing not, the decline of Kenyan cricket. Yes. Where we were, yes. right from the 50s, 60s, the standards, just like you mentioned, were amazing at that point. Right? Yes. And we, we've gone to such a level. Yeah. Is there any way we can spring back? Of course. I, I, I still... I am a still uh, firm believer Kenya have talent. If right people are put in the right place, you will see Kenya can restore its glory back. 
I'm telling you, Fayez, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% sure. Can you have got talent? You see, sometimes people gang up. It's not fair. Selection committee have to be transparent, accountable. You know, we cannot just uh, make any, any Tom, Dick or Harry to become the, uh, the selectors. You know, we should have that, uh, if a team is not doing well, we should have proper reports. There should be certain criteria and the right people should yes, be brought yes. into But I'll tell you one thing, you know, positions. sometimes people blame the chairman. I, I would not blame the past chairman. You know, ch chairmen have done their best because nobody wants to do bad for their association. So chairmen have done well, but if players, they don't perform, they should take the blame, you know. True, true. But before we end the, our interview, I would like to thank... Uh, a few uh, associations like my association, Kenya Cricket Umpires and Scorers Association, mm -hmm. Kenya Cricket Association, Nairobi Provincial Cricket Association, uh, Coast Cricket Association, Rift Valley Cricket Association, Africa Cricket Association, ICC Africa, and uh, ICC Head Office. No, before they were at the Lords. They were having a small office with Mr. Clive Hitchcock mm -hmm. managing the place. Now they have moved to Dubai. Okay. It's a yes. big, big place now. Mm -hmm. And you know, let me tell you, you, you start empiring with 20 shillings uh, game and you give it back. And then you have so much power, so many associations backing you up. You know, it, and, and not forgetting the blessings of God and my family, especially my wife. That's great. Thank you so much, okay. Subhash Modi. Yeah. Uh, for being our guest on The Living Legends. And, uh, you are a true living legend and um, of course we highly appreciate you. Yes, and uh, the final word Mr. Fayez, you, you asked me a question those empires would like to come up, I think uh, they should come up they should give something, those cricketers who are retired, they should come forward and give something back to the game for betterment of the noble game of cricket and for the entire, uh, I would say cricketing, sporting uh, Fraternity. Fraternity. We hope for the best. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much. Subhash Modi. Yeah. A video review justified a leg before wicket call he made on his son Hitesh in 2006, making him the only father to have had his son dismissed in a cricket match. He has met the British monarch, the Malaysian king, and former president Daniel Aramoy in the course of duty. He has given service to Kenyan cricket as a player, official, and umpire. We thank now retired elite cricket umpire Subhash Modi for giving giving his time on The Living Legends. I'm Fayaz Qureshi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Fayaz Qureshi. Be blessed.